All right, gamers, tech enthusiasts and creators, stop what you are doing for just a moment. Because something massive is brewing in the world of GPUs. You thought the RTX 5090 was overkill. Think again, the RTX 6090 is coming. And it's about to reset the definition of performance across the board. This is not just about incremental gains. We are not talking about a 10 percentage bump here or a power efficiency tweak there. We are talking about raw, unapologetic, mind-bending horsepower that could shake the foundations of both gaming and content creation. Think back for a second. Remember when the GTX 1080 Ti dropped? It was like a punch through the performance ceiling. There was no DLSS back then, no deep learning upscaling, no AI magic. It was just raw silicon muscle that got ruled for years simply because it was that good. Now, Nvidia is tapping into that same philosophy again, but this time with more advanced architecture, smarter tech, and a massive leap forward in capability. The 6090 is not coming to play, it's coming to dominate. Let's rewind the clock a bit to 2017, an iconic year for PC gamers. That was when Nvidia dropped the GTX 1080 Ti and trust me, the industry felt it. It was not just a graphics card, it was the benchmark. For years, people used it as a baseline to test new titles, tweak ultra settings and see just how far hardware could be pushed. It was a raw performance king, no tricks, no AI, just brute force compute. That card was not just powerful, it was reliable, consistent and future proof. Games that came out years after it launched still ran well on the 1080 Ti, proving just how ahead of its time it really was. And part of that came down to one thing. On software-based performance boost, the power right there on the die. Fast forward a few years and we saw the landscape shift. Starting with the RTX 2000 series, Nvidia began heavily integrating AI into the mix. Technologies like DLSS started reducing the need for raw rendering. The card become more efficient, smarter, but that raw edge started to smooth out. Yes, we got better frame rates, more realistic lighting with ray tracing, and advanced image scaling. But somewhere along the way, that 1080 Ti level aggression was softened. The GPU industry shifted towards optimization, but not everyone was happy about that. That's why the RTX 6090 is making noise right now. It's not just about being the next generation GPU, it's about bringing back that non-compromised maximum throttle power while still embracing everything that makes modern cards so powerful. So here is where things starts to heat up. Let's dive into what actually makes the RTX 6090 such a game-changing leap. First off, this is not a tweaked 5090. The RTX 6090 is a complete architectural overhaul and it shows in every metric. From power output to memory capacity, from core redesign to energy efficiency, the 6090 is being positioned not just as a flagship but as a statement piece. It's Nvidia saying, yeah, we can still do raw power and we can do it better than ever. Let's talk numbers for a second. 32 GB of DDR7 VRAM. That's enough for handling massive textures, real-time 3D work, 8K rendering pipelines, and complex machine learning models all simultaneously. A 600 watts power envelope, that's a serious jump. And it tells us that Nvidia is ready to push the limits again, but don't panic about power draw just yet. We will get into that balance later. Here is what makes it unique. The performance jumps over the RTX 5090 is being reported at up to 80% in real-world productivity workloads. That's not just a step up, that's a leap. It reminds us of the jump we saw between the RTX 3000 series to the 4000 series. Remember how the transient supercharged ray tracing and DLSS. This one promises to be even more significant. Whether you are gaming at 4K, 144Hz, editing 12K video, or training AI models, this card is not going to flinch. And that's before we even touch on the architecture itself. Now let's get into real magic, Rubin Architecture. This is Nvidia brand new platform built to carry their next generation of cards into the future. Named Rubin, Rubin will be remembered as a generational leap. First major shift, it's being built on TSMC 3 nanometer process node, that's huge. It means Nvidia can pack more transistors onto a smaller chip while keeping thermal output under control. More transistors equal to more logic, equal to more rendering, equal to more frames. All without turning your PC into a toaster oven. Second, Rubin brings in a small 4x mesh design. This is like supercharging the GPU's brain. 
with a denser, more efficient core layout, Rubin can execute a lot more instructions per cycle, which means faster data throughout, lower latency, and a dramatic boost in compute performance. We are looking at an architectural design with a parallelism in mind. It handles more threads, processes more data, and distributes workloads with laser precision, especially in high load environments like ray tracing and AI rendering. But What's most impressive, Rubin doesn't just boost performance, it manages to keep power consumption close to the previous generation. Despite offering up to 80% more net productivity, it doesn't spike heat the way older architecture would. That's what makes it such a brilliant evolution, not just faster, but smarter. Let's not dance around it. Here is the specs you came for. Memory, 32 gigs DDR7 ultra fast memory bandwidth. Power draw 600 watts, serious juice, serious cooling, performance gain 80% over RTX 5090 in raw computational power. Ray tracing and full support for next generation DLSS, release date targeting mid 2026. Now 32 gigs of VRAM is not just a flex, it's Nvidia future proofing this card. Games are getting bigger, textures are getting denser, and open world games with AI driven assets needs massive headroom. This card is not going to struggle anytime soon. Also, yes, 600 watts, it's hefty. But remember that peak performance power, real world use cases may drop far less, and Nvidia is expected to optimize power curves based on load. So, while your PCU needs to beefy, you are not going to fry your system every time you boot up. Nvidia is not stopping with one model, they are crafting full 6090 lineup. So far, we know of three distinct versions. RTX 6090 Standard or RTX 6090 Super. This could be the most balanced of the bunch. Think of it like the 4080 Super, performance close to the TI, a smart choice for high-end gamers who don't want to upgrade their PCU or cooling setup. This is not just a gaming card. The RTX 6090 is going to be a creator's cream. For those working with 4K, 8K or even 12K workflows, 3D modeling, AI video tools or VFX heavy timelines, the 32 gigs of VRAM alone is a game changer. You will no longer need to rely on catching to system memory, everything happens in real time. Plus, Rubin brings enhanced CUDA cores count, faster NVENC, NVDEC encoders and more efficient tensor processing. That means better exports, faster renders and smoother previous in Premiere Pro, Blender, DaVinci Resolve, Unreal Engine and more. For AI developers, the RTX 6090 might just become your go-to desktop GPUs. It's a monster for training models, running simulations, and deep learning, all while maintaining desktop level flexibility. Now, let's address the elephant in the room. 600 watts. Now, is the number made your jaw drop? You are not alone. For a long time, GPUs hovered in the 250 to 350 watt range. The RTX 4090 pushed into the 450 watts territory, and now we are looking at 600 watts plus monster. That raises lots of questions, not just about power supply needs, but about cooling, case airflow, and long-term thermal behavior. Here is the thing, Nvidia knows this is not a casual plug and play upgrade. This card is designed for enthusiasts who already have or are willing to build a high-end system. If you're running a standard 750W PCO, this card will not cut it. You're going to need a solid 1000W to 1200W PCU, preferably platinum rated for stability. But it's not just about how much power it draws, it also how smartly it draws it. Rubin architecture allows dynamic power allocations, meaning under lower loads like web browsing or light editing, it won't be burning full throttle. And when you're gaming or rendering, it ramps up smartly. Cooling wise, we are expected triple slot cards minimum and possibly some liquid cooled or hybrid variants. There is also a strong chance that AIB partners like Asus, MSI, EVGA will launch beefed up custom versions with vapor chamber cooling, extra fans and even external PCU kits for stability. So yes, it's a power hungry beast, but if you are buying a 6090, you are not building a mid-range rig, you are building a desktop powerhouse, and every part of that needs to be ready. So RTX 6090 will almost certainly be one of the first NVIDIA GPU to support full PCIe Gen 5.0 bandwidth. So what does that mean? PCIe 5.0 doubles the bandwidth of PCIe 4.0, up to 64 gigabytes per second, compared to 32 gigs. This might not directly impact gaming performance right away, but for data heavy 
workflows, content creators, and AI developers, it means no bottlenecks when transferring massive datasets or 3D models. Also, expect to see a return of 16-pin PCI 12BHP WR connector, maybe even refined version of it. NVIDIA might address the issue. We saw with the melting connectors on the 4090 by working with PCU manufacturers to create native 16-pin outputs with better thermal control and less wiggle room. Memory bandwidth also sees a massive jump. Thanks to GDDR7, it offers a peak transfer rate of 32 gigs, a huge step up from GDDR6X, which caps out at around 23 Gbps. That alone contributes to a higher FPS in 8K, low latency ray tracing, and real time rendering improvements we are seeing in early engineering samples. So, not only is this card powerful, it also designed to stay ahead of bandwidth limitations that could have slowed it down. So, here is the real question Should you start saving for the RTX 6090? If you are someone who wants wants the absolute best, the kind of person who runs games at ultra settings without compromise, who edits heavy timelines or who train AI models for work or research, then yeah, the 6090 is absolutely worth considering. But let's be real, it's going to be expensive. Don't be shocked if the price tag hits 2500 bucks or more. Especially if you're looking at the Thai or Founder Edition variants and remember you are likely need to upgrade your PCU, possibly your cooling system and even your case just to fit this beast in. So it's not just a GPU upgrade, it's a platform investment. But for those who make the investment, you're buying a GPU that could last half a decade or more. A card that overkill today or still relevant in 2030 and let's be honest, in the fast moving world of hardware, that kind of longevity is gold. If you are a builder, enthusiast or a power user, the RTX 6090 is shaping up to be a crown jewel of next-gen desktop performance. And if the early leaks, benchmarks and architecture details are anything to go by, this could be the biggest leap since the 1080 Ti. So are we ready for what Rubin architecture is about to unleash? Let me know in the comments, is this the type of GPU you would go all in for or is it too much power, too much heat or too steep of a price? Smash that like button if you're hyped for what the RTX 6090 is bringing. Subscribe if you're into deep tech dives, gaming hardware breakdowns and the real story behind the silicon. And hey, share this with your GPU obsessed friend who already budgeting for 2026. Because trust me, the GPU wars are not over, they're just getting started. Catch you next time. Peace out.